and welcome back to Science Never Stops with the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. My name is David Weigel, and I'm here to teach you how to explore the universe using Worldwide Telescope. This is part two, all about the solar system. For the second part of this tour of Worldwide Telescope, teaching you how to explore the universe on your own for free, we are going to focus on the solar system mode. And so if you get into Worldwide Telescope, which you can find at worldwidetelescope.org, um, a reminder that I'm using the Windows version, but there's also an online version as well, uh, which is almost the same thing. If you go to the bottom left corner of the screen, you should see this look at, and if solar system is toggled, that is selected, then you are in the right place. So in the previous tutorial, we talked about the sky. Now we're going to talk about the solar system mode. So just as we did in the sky mode, if we use the left mouse button, we can click and drag and move our view around whatever our center of reference is, whatever our reference frame is. And in this case, we're focused on the sun, which it tells us in the bottom right of the screen. And so we can move around that. We can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel on a physical mouse or two fingers on a laptop or a tablet. So we can scroll in, zoom in, and we can see various different things are visualized in here. We have uh, different planetary orbits in here, including that of Pluto, which is this sort of funky oblong looking one, not quite in line with the others. We have the asteroid belt in here and various other uh, small objects, minor planets. And uh, that includes the Kuiper Belt out past Neptune's orbit in here. And what's wild about this is that this is a real-time simulation of our solar system as it stands at this very second, or rather at the second that I'm recording this video. And so what we can do is we can manipulate time and basically see where these things um, will end up, or where they should be at a certain place in time. So we can manipulate that if we go to the top of the screen, we have this uh, view in here. If we click on that view menu, we can change time uh, first off to right now, uh, which it was, uh, or nearly was. And we can notice that nothing really is changing. And it's not that time isn't advancing, but rather that, of course, the scales that these things are moving through. Um, the distances that these things are moving through are enormous and would be and take a little while for us to perceive any difference. So if we speed time up using this button right in here, we'll have to click it a few times to advance time by, what are we at, 100,000 times speed, a million times speed, and eventually we can start to see things moving around. Now the planet calculations uh, work very well far out into the future. The smaller bodies, the different minor planets, uh, start to wash out after a little while because the way their orbits are calculated is a little bit uh, less precise, but you get the idea and the effect is still very cool. So I'll pause that and bring it right back to now. If you look at the bottom of our screen in that context menu that we talked about in the first tutorial, we'll see all of the different planets. We've got the Sun, we have Pluto, we have our moon, we have the four largest moons of Jupiter called uh, the Galilean moons because that's who discovered them. And if we click on one of these things, let's click on Mars for example, Worldwide Telescope will take us on a nice cinematic tour from where we started to where we're ending, and we almost hit the sun there, so watch out for that. And you'll notice as we get to Mars that we still have a, a sort of crowded view in here, so we can go ahead and, and remove some things, and we can do that by going to the left side of our screen into the Layer Manager. So we can see that asteroids are toggled on, and those are that includes all minor uh, planets as well, minor objects. So we can toggle that off, we could toggle constellations on if we desired, uh, but we don't have to, and I'm not going to. We can get rid of planetary orbits. I may do that right now. And you can see that we also have various layers that are specific uh, to each world. Uh, it's an important point to note that when you're clicking in Worldwide Telescope, you definitely want to have very precise clicks. 
So if you're trying to open and close these little menus and perhaps you click uh, not quite in the right place, then nothing's going to happen. Um, I'm trying to make that happen and it's working a lot better for me uh, than it sometimes does, but keep in mind that you have to really click on it and if you get close, it doesn't always work. So make sure you're very careful with that. So we can zoom around Mars, uh, we can zoom into Mars if we like, and as we zoom in closer, more and more imagery tiles in and it's quite, quite uh, exciting. So we can explore Mars in all sorts of detail. So another thing we can do is if we were to zoom in, or perhaps let's, uh, let's find something a little bit more interesting, let's advance time just a little bit on Mars so that Valles Marineris comes into the day side. Valles Marineris is basically the Grand Canyon of Mars, which stretches about as long as the United States is wide, which is uh, big, I guess you could say. So we'll pause time right in there. And if we zoom into this, if I hold down the control key on the keyboard and still use that left mouse click to click and drag and go up, then we change our angle. Or if I go down, it changes the angle back to sort of direct. So we can actually use that to um, manipulate us into this canyon. And then we can sort of cruise along through it, which is pretty neat. And we can see this simulated Martian atmosphere as well. Now, if we click twice on here, if we click once, it takes us on this nice, uh, nice ride, as you saw before. If we click twice, it's a very abrupt change and maybe less pretty, but it's something that uh, takes you very, very quickly. So I'm going to go back to right now because I'm doing this tour in the daytime, and that means that North America is in the daytime. And I want to point out that you can get very close uh, to the Earth as well and see all sorts of things like your house, for example. So we have plenty of things turned on in here. We have clouds. We could turn those off if we so desire. We could turn off uh, the sky and atmosphere. I think that looks a bit dreary. We won't do that for now. Uh, but I'm going to zoom in a bit and bring you to the Space and Rocket Center. So zooming in, zooming in. Sometimes we have to wait for our internet uh, to catch up so that all the resolution tiles in. And right now you'll notice I'm not clicking anything and the Earth seems to be escaping us and moving away. That's again because we are in real time, as you can see up here, and the Earth is rotating on its axis and so it's leaving us behind. So I'm going to pause that so we can more easily find the Space Rocket Center, um, which is situated right in here. And of course, we can take a look at the Intuitive Planetarium, uh, which is where I spend most of my time, and that's right in here. The Saturn V is nice, I guess, as is Pathfinder and everything else. We're going to zoom back out because I'd like to uh, show you another thing that uh, people who are exploring in Worldwide Telescope often miss, which is the International Space Station. So um, if your menu wasn't open like this, it may have looked something a little bit more um, like this, perhaps. You can open up all these uh, different menus, the sun to find the earth, the earth to find other things. And if you look at ISS, that stands for International Space Station. If we right click on this, then we can track this reference frame, making sure both of these things are toggled, both checked, and your 3D model might not jump in if it's the first time you're visiting it because you do have to download the model from the internet and it's not too small, but we can uh, take a look at where the International Space Station is right now. And right now it's in the dark. So if we advance time just a bit, 100 times speed, it looks like it just went into the dark. That's why it's taking this long. There we go. So we can bring this back down to normal speed. And so this is nice cruising speed for the International Space Station. And it looks like it's over Australia. And this is a very fun model to explore and, and quite high fidelity. Um, important to note that there are four Soyuz capsules that are all docked at once. And that's very likely something that would never happen. But other than that, it's a, a quite high fidelity 
model of the International Space Station. The last thing I want to show you as we're exploring um, this solar system mode in there, oh, don't mind that, I got to that by doing a right click, more on that in another video perhaps. As we're zooming away, and to give you some perspective, I could use some planetary orbits to give you a sense of scale. If we start to move farther out of our solar system, you can see the various different stars that are all represented in three-dimensional space, as taken from the Hafarkos catalog. And then we also have a volumetric rendering of the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy, right in here, which is quite beautiful. Uh, in order to have this, you do need to have it checked on in the layer manager. Keeping in mind that if you can't find the layer manager, you can always toggle it off or on using this button in the left, lower left part of your screen. And zooming away even further, we have various galactic surveys that show you where different galaxies are in our universe, and they're all in their correct locations with an appropriate picture to show you what type of galaxy it is, whether it's spiral or elliptical or something along those lines. So I, that will conclude this second tour of Worldwide Telescope. Stay tuned tomorrow for our third version, uh, our third tour in the series, which will talk about video making. And also join us uh, tomorrow, Friday at 7 p.m. as we go live, as I go live on Facebook to give a nice talk about uh, what's up in the night sky at this time of year from the Huntsville area using Worldwide Telescope. You'll be able to follow along at worldwidetelescope.org and I'm happy to answer any questions about how to use the software and about what's up in the night sky right now. So thank you for joining me and remember that science never stops at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center or anywhere. Thanks so much.